We continue to preview the 2023 college football season, and today our stop is Wichita, Kansas, where we get to visit with Terry Harrison, who is heading into year two as the head coach of the Friends Falcons. Coach, it's always a privilege to get to visit with you, and, and I appreciate having you on the channel. Let's talk about year one for just a moment. Four and seven last year, and most wins for the program since 2017. Talk about year one for just a moment. Yeah, well, thanks for having me on. I really do, man. Just it's such a great program. You do a phenomenal job. And I mean, honestly, you're the best, man. So I appreciate you having us on. But um, no, great first year. Uh, we were talking before we got going here, just such an exciting time at Friends. Um, you know, we really had, we we just had for year one to come in, win four games, which was the most of 2017, like you mentioned. We were competitive in so many games and really felt like um, in the fourth quarter, we had some opportunities to win that we let slip away, slip away. And so while that can be frustrating, we're just so encouraged here because in order to win close games in the fourth quarter against championship level teams, sometimes you gotta learn how to lose them. And so a little bit of our learning lessons last year were that. And so our kids did a phenomenal job, just a great group of kids. They all have come back. Um, our retention is through the roof. I mean, not maybe not a hundred percent, but 99% retention as far as kids coming back to play here. And I, and I hope that speaks to Number one, Fringe University, just phenomenal school with so many excellent opportunities outside of football. And then number two, just the way the, the relationships we have our kids and, and just the experience kids get here, it really is big time. And so that it sure seems to be trending in, in the right direction and definitely coming off a great year for us. You know, we've, we've mentioned this actually on the program before, not just uh, the coaching staff and what you all do and the university itself, but the facilities are fantastic there too and, and seem to be getting better all the time. You know, last year coming – off a, a season again where there were change all the way around, change in the way everything was done. You pick up four wins along the way. You had a couple of players that got first team honors in the all KCAC nod there. Uh, one of those, Zach Dressler. Now it's a, a running game. Your, your offense is a special offense that I know is a challenge for opposing defenses every week, unless they get you the first, first week of the year, they've had the summer to plan for it a little bit, <laughs> but uh, Zach Dressler, a thousand yard back for you last season. One of the many players that got to carry the ball for you, 1,270 yards. He was first team all conference. Yeah, I think he, I think he led, led the conference in rushing. If not, he was top three, but I'm pretty sure he was number one, but regardless, yes, just, man, he had such a great year in his first year with us as a coaching staff and in the program. Um, you know, a kid recruit out of high school that went elsewhere and then circumstances brought him back to Wichita and then we got to reconnect here. But man, he had such a great year. Um, it was fun to watch. It was really electric. And he was kind of the bell cow. And you know, we were young at most other positions. So we had to, you know, a, a kid like that who had experience playing college football. We kind of had to ride him, you know, throughout the season. So we're excited also next year to surround, you know, surround him a little more experience and hopefully where he doesn't have to carry quite as much of a load. But, you know, more than that, man, great year. Um, could happen for a better kid for him being, you know, I think he was first team all conference and, you know, more than that, he is a, he's an all American teammate and an all American kid and all American student. He's at every sporting event on campus, volunteers, anytime something's needed on campus. And so um, just a kid that's really easy to pull for and, and certainly someone we're extremely proud of, you know, representing friends. And, and especially when you talk about postseason honors, could, couldn't go to a more deserving kid. Um, and we're definitely excited to watch year two, um, see him coming back. Well, not not having him to take the workload as much. I'm sure he wasn't complaining about carrying the ball, right? <laughs> no, not at all. Uh, he would have carried it more for sure, you know. So, <laughs> yeah, he had, he had a great year. Definitely, you know, how it is those kids watch this great position for us. You know, I think our kid it couldn't be a better place to play for running backs anywhere in the country, but especially guys in Kansas that were recruiting. Like, if, if you want to run the football and, and do it at a high level, um, you know, great place to be. And he definitely he doesn't turn them down. He never turns down the carries. I'll leave it at that. <laughs> All right. Well, then, Coach, you talk about carrying the ball. And, and again, an offense that's predicated on the run, to, to be able to have the success that you all did, led the NAI in rushing yards last year, more than 3,000 rushing yards, you have to have a good offensive line. Another player that got all-conference mention, first team all-KCAC, and actually was an honorable mention All-American last year on that offensive line for you, and Noah Redcorn. Yeah, he did. A, man, such a great job. It was a really nice surprise, too. You know, I don't think he played as much in the, for the previous staff, but for us, he's a perfect fit as far as his skill set and his build. And so he just, man, did had such a great year. He's a Cape and Mount Carmel kid here in town, so he's a local kid. Um, and another just all-American teammate, you know, just a great kid who's, you know, really just, man, couldn't be more proud of him and he's just such a great kid to be around. But, yeah, he had a, had a great year. And, and when you win, you know, when you when you win the rushing title in the country, you, you tend to get all-American offensive linemen, and we've been very fortunate to have one every year. I think we've been coaching in college. And so he was just the next one. 
um, and definitely deserving, very humble. And you know how it is uh, when you congratulate, he didn't even know how, he didn't know how to take it. Well, you know, like tell him congrats. He got it. And he's like the norm, like the normal old lineman of like, uh, yeah, thanks coach. You know, you're not, you're not used to getting awards, I guess. And so, um, but it was very fun for him to get that. And we look for him just to have another big impact on, on the, on the offensive line again this year. I mean, really surrounded with, with a bunch of returning starters and some transfers that are going to help a ton. And so, Man, it's just the O line. It really could be our deepest position on our team next year, and so him being there to lead the way will be it'd be, it'd be really cool. And um, yeah, we're really excited about that position moving forward. We're visiting now with Coach Terry Harrison from Friends here on Midwest Sportsnet. I encourage you please subscribe to the channel and continue to watch these videos. We're having fun previewing the twenty three college football season. We talk about small college sports and more throughout the Midwest and beyond. Uh, we could talk about the offense a little bit more. I would like to look at the defense just a bit there because you were mentioning the fact that you returned so many players. You returned just about everyone, but you got some transfers too coming in among those. Trey Palmer coming in. Talk about the defense and uh, maybe a, a new look this year. Yeah, you know, the 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 main thing is, you know, we're starting to, tra- you know, kids took on a new scheme, just like you talked about, right? First year, so, you know, new year, new coaches, new scheme, all that good stuff. Um, but, yeah, you know, Trey Palmer is going to be a graduate transfer who was a, you know, like an eight-time All-American between two sports. Um, but we recruited him to Bethel, and then he graduated. He's coming here. And so he'll be an impact guy um, as a corner. But we return corners as well. Um, and Braden Gordon and Cy Ponte, who are phenomenal players, both were either honorable mention all-conference or definitely in the conversations. I mean, so what it does is it gives us some depth in the secondary, which in college football, if you can't cover, it's just – you know, it's just real hard to win because there's so many talented quarterbacks out there and, and receivers that can throw and catch. So very excited about that. Return a bunch of linebackers, Peyton Douglas, a middle linebacker that played as a freshman, who's a Mill Valley kid, who's a you know a state powerhouse for us in Kansas um, at the high school level. Um, so that's awesome. We, we actually moved a kid over this spring. Look great. Andrew Arnold, who played, started at quarterback at times for us last year. We popped him over to defense in the spring. And honestly, he looked Man, he looked as good as anyone in the spring, just flying around. He's, you know, he's a big, you know, weight room warrior type of guy. So we're excited to see him. Um, and we have some returning, you know, other returning linebackers as well doing a great job. And then up front, defensive line, huge jump in the spring um, for those guys. Um, Marco Torres, who's been here, we inherited him here, who's been now be a junior, um, did a great job this spring. It was really hard to block. Um, and so that, that was really fun to watch those guys. And so it, it should be. Man, between all those guys and then Nolan Ewing, who was really our team leader on defense last year as a safety, you know, if we'd have been better, he probably would have been defensive player of the year. But, you know, we just didn't have the record to support that award. Um, But with his leadership on defense, um, man, I I really think we're going to see a really big jump for those guys. And they're just going to be a tough team to play against on Saturdays. And I think, um, you know, hopefully we can get back up there in our sacks and tackles for losses as, as far as where we've been in the past and, and interceptions. So Coach Kemp did a great job and so many good players. Hard to mention them all. Definitely forgot someone, I'm sure. Um, but, man, we, we think we're putting together, you know, the right group of kids to go out on Saturday and give us an opportunity to win every game. Well, with, with the retention that you have right there and then with transfer players coming in, there's no way you could remember all of them. I mean, there's there <laughs> almost be too many. Uh, really quickly, to jump back over to the offense for a moment, that you mentioned that Arnold – who saw time at quarterback for you last season, playing on the other side of the ball, who's going to be filling that spot and leading the way there from that quarterback position? Well, Jack Mullen, so Jack Mullen's a returning starter. You know, him, him and Andrew, it was really an injury situation where those guys kind of traded off. He'll be a fifth-year senior, so working on grad school here, um, returning starter. Um, we also have a young man that was here last year but now has worked through, you know, all the, you know, all the academic requirements for eligibility. But his name is Cavante uh, Baker, who played for me in high school, actually, but very electric athlete, uh, great football player. So it'll be fun to watch him and Jack in the fall compete and see how that shakes out. And, and then obviously we, we brought in some really good local players, um, quarterbacks um, between uh, Brock Zerger out of Derby, who's a, you know, th- that team's won, been in the state championship, I think forever now. Um, DJ Dingle, who's a Heights kid, um, who's a coach's kid, who's a phenomenal athlete quarterback the watching those two come in as fresh be awesome and we also um, we picked up Tyler for green out of Clearwater and Caden Edwards who's a flexible quarterback um, out of Texas so man we're just very deep at quarterback which is awesome you know we kind of learned that last year we don't want to we, we want to be very deep want to be very competitive and between uh, varsity Saturdays and our JV our JV program man those guys are going to get to develop and we're just going to see kind of how that shakes out and, and we project them all to be really good players so it should be a lot of fun um, and, and definitely an exciting group uh, to see them, you know, progress this fall. 
And and with with the offense that you run again, that that look where you, you you're keeping the ball on the ground, different looks there. I, there were I believe 18 different players that carried the ball for you last season. So right. I mean, anyone that comes in, you know that they they have to be thinking I'm at least going to get the chance, you know, somewhere down the line, uh, <coughs> to get in and and make something happen. One uh, area though, special teams. Bobby Schmidt kicked and punted for you last season. He's moved on. What's your special teams look like? Yeah, so we're returning a, a, another kicker who, who who actually got a little bit. Of, uh, we we kicked him on some extra points in field goal situations last year. Uh, forgive me, sorry. He kicked he kicked off off the tee, and Bobby would finish with some field goals. You know how it goes. I, forgive me on that. Um, but Aiden Hess is his name. He's a local Wichita kid. Man, had a great spring. He's gotten a you know kickers. You know, leg strength is so important, you know, in the weight room. And so to see him develop now, he looked phenomenal this spring, um, really driving footballs deep um, in the end zone uh, on kickoffs. Um, Blake Oliphant, we have a transfer from Oklahoma Westland. And obviously they don't have football, but he's a soccer player there. Great kicker as well. And then we're bringing in a young man named Cole Thompson out of Texas. And so we're going to have three, we're going to be three deep at kicker, punter, specialist, um, however you want to play that. And it'll be fun to watch those guys compete. And, you know, it was cool when Cole came up on his recruiting trip, we had, those guys were all out there together and, you know, kicking is, it's really cool. If you haven't been around special teams and just the, the culture within kicking, very supportive, they're all excited for each other. They work and coach each other. Um, and so it, I think we'll have, a, we'll have good chemistry there, which is really cool. Um, and so it'll be fun to watch those guys um, as far as who, who comes out, as far as kicking and punting and, and how they progress through the season, what that competition looks like you know, through the course of a full season. There has to be excitement in Wichita about what Friends is doing and the direction that the Falcons are going on the football field, definitely trending upward right now. And the season gets underway on August 26th, as you all will host the University of St. Mary, go on the road after that at Ottawa. And it is a different look in the KCAC. I mean, it's it's a total KCAC schedule for you all this year. Now 12 teams in the conference with the addition of Evangel, a two-division league this year and then so you you play some crossover games first get the bye week get into your division divisions to be named later uh so we'll uh we'll try to get that word to you when we find out what they'll be called officially but that having been said after the bye week you take on southwestern have the guys from just down the road come to town on october 14th and then another uh another strong divisional game you go on the road and head back to bethel on october 28th talk about your schedule yeah, you know, phenomenal. I think what the KCAC has done as far as our division play in the setup is, is truly, um, man, just a just a phenomenal and, and kind of um, a little bit unprecedented what they're doing as far as our divisions. And, man, I hope this has been released. I, I don't know, but I'll, 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 we'll break the news here on the summit. But, uh, you know, <laughs> realigning every two years. So we're going to have our division split, right? And, and I know they've released that schedule. But then it will realign every two years based on records. So it's you're not going to be in the same division necessarily – um, all the time, every three years. So then, you know, you don't you don't get a stronger division versus another um, because the best part of this whole deal is you're going to get an automatic playoff berth if you win your division. And so that's what the KCAC has been missing, you know, and that's why adding Evangel has been so huge for our program and, and it's so awesome, you know, the work that Scott Crawford's done in the conference to, to, to get them to join us. Um, and so it'll hopefully eliminate, you know, some of the frustrations out there. The last three years, we've had some teams miss the playoffs that, you know, right, wrong, or indifferent, it, it was just the way it was, you know. And, and, and beyond that, the NEI expanded the playoff field to 20. And so there'll be four more teams going anyway. So really just what you talked about, excitement moving forward, you know, not only for friends, but for the conference, right? Uh, we're going to get more teams in the playoffs and even a better chance for three to go now with 20 teams going. Um, but for us, like you mentioned, you know, the fact that we're in two divisions, you know, definitely coming off that bye week could be huge, you know, with, with uh, Southwestern then Bethel. So we'll have to, you know, the cool part is we get that pre, pre-divisional pre games where you get to kind of find out your strengths and let competitions play out um, to really set yourself after the bye week to come out and give it your really your best shot um, for those last five games to see, you know, if you can make the playoffs. But for us, so exciting, like you mentioned, because of number one, automatic playoff first, and then number two, locally, we've recruited so well, nationally, but especially on the local side here in Wichita, as far as excitement within our community, um, they're really just in a better time to be at friends. And so, man, just really cool. They're, they're building, they're adding on to our engineering division here. So our mechanical engineering program is growing. I can see construction going on outside. Um, fine art center is growing. And so when you see, you know, when you see construction on a campus, like you mentioned, which is already beautiful here in downtown Wichita, when you start adding these elite academic programs, man, just, just, man, just so excited about what could be in the vision that president Kerry's laid out. 
um, for our university. And so we just want to, we want to contribute to that as much as we can. Well, it is a beautiful campus and I thoroughly enjoy visiting there and look forward to the next time that we get to do a show up there. We're speaking now with Terry Harrison and I appreciate you coming on the show. By the way, I was uh, looking back and I, I talk about sometimes a friend of the channel. I think I'm going to, you're at the point now and I did, uh, did for sure verify this. We're going to have to get you one of those jackets. Like when you host Saturday night live for at least five times. So uh, be looking for your, for your jacket in the mail there. Uh, hey, just, it just make, just that make, many times. hey, just make sure it's red and I'll wear it every day. But no, I, uh, <laughs> uh, no, man, that's awesome. I appreciate it. We, uh, we loved having you here in the fall. I think we had some rain. It's raining here today. And I think you bring the rain. You know I'm what I mean? Geez, so yeah, that's exactly <laughs> right. Well, you know, <laughs> I, I, uh, you make coaching in the KCAC cool. So that, that, yeah. that works out all right. I will. Yeah. It was interesting last year when, when I did come up because it was September and not only was it raining, it was about 50 degrees, maybe a little bit less. I didn't bring a jacket. It's September. Are you kidding me? South Kansas. I'm not bringing a jacket. And uh, yeah, I get pretty chilly up there. So we'll, uh, we'll see how it comes next time. I'll try to bring some, let me know when, when it gets to be dry. <laughs> Uh, Coach Jerry Harrison from Friends, the Falcons coming off a four and seven season and looking forward to a new year, a, a better year, trending upward in Wichita. Coach Harrison, thank you so much for taking time with us today here on the Summit. Thanks, Joey.